Not that weird. But that is... Piss? We all know the Kentrosaurus wasn't bred for the cold. But what if it was replaced by something which was? What if instead of housing a Kentrosaurus, Manticore Island was home to a different animal? An animal of brute force, which existed during the Pleistocene. In this episode, we dive deep into a creature buried in the Arctic permafrost. What if the woolly mammoth was in Jurassic World? Chaos, containment, consequences. This isn't an act of sheer will. It's a moment of cataclysmic change where science creates alternate worlds. What if different characters or creatures were involved in altogether different outcomes? In this series, this series, this series we will explore what could have been could have been in a world of Jurassic possibilities. Join us on a journey 65 million years in the making as we explore the question. What if? The year is 2010. Jurassic World has been open on Isla Nublar for five years, and Masrani Global continue to explore the globe in hunt of new genomes which might add altogether different animals to the roster of creatures present within their debut attractions. On the Arctic tundra of Siberia, one research expedition working for the company come across a group of woolly mammoths buried in a native permafrost. Convinced that these animals have potential, Simon Masrani orders the construction of a site on the ground in Russia. The following year, two mines in Argentina are closed as Masrani Global reallocate in-gen assets to their new project. Amongst the staff who have been reallocated to this project is one senior in-gen researcher, Dr. Laura Sorkin. A holdover from the Isla Nublar project like Dr. Wu, Sorkin is assigned to oversight the construction of the Siberia facility, codenamed Martel. In spring of 2012, construction on the site begins. Whilst Masrani Global developed their Martel site in the Northern Hemisphere, Dr. Henry Wu begins work on a new project on Isla Nublar in hopes of attracting new visitors to the island. This project will be known as Project Ibris. In the summer of 2014, Henry Wu has a breakthrough with Project Ibris, and Jurassic World opens a world's first attraction where tourists are able to safely enter the enclosure of behavior-controlled dinosaurs. As interest in the program peaked, the park introduced a new Velociraptor paddock which would allow people to get up close and personal with these deadly predators. For VIP guests, a new package was introduced which would allow them to get face to face with trained Velociraptors under the watchful eye of Owen Grady. I mean, who wouldn't want to pay to feed Velociraptors, right? In this world, the success of Project Ibris means that there is a renaissance in visitor numbers. This leads to Henry Wu to further his research into animal behavior, leaving the elusive Indominus Rex as a project which is ultimately shelved due to high cost by comparison. In November of the same year, construction on the Martel facility is completed and research begins. The facility is tasked with drilling into 42 glacial ice locations in search of organic remains from the Pleistocene Epoch. Dr. Sorkin focuses her work specifically for the woolly mammoth believing that this may be key to her progressing to the ranks of the science division and finally rivaling Henry Wu. In February of 2015, Sorkin strikes gold as several highly preserved woolly mammoth carcasses are recovered from the ice. Sorkin immediately requests permission from Simon Masrani to extract the DNA from these animals so that InGen may clone their own versions of the Tundra Titans. With the Jurassic World incident never occurring in this universe, Simon Masrani warms to the idea of Autumn 2016, 
requesting that the doctor prepare specimens for an arctic tundra biome to be added to Isla Nublar's menagerie. Sorkin is delighted with this news and is able to successfully hatch several juvenile woolly mammoths, with their growth underway within the Martel facility. As is often the case in this universe, however, chaos chooses to strike in the winter of the same year. A devastating snowstorm strikes the facility, disabling the power and blocking access to the site for an extensive period of time. Dr. Sorkin and her research staff narrowly survived this incident, with many suffering life-changing injuries due to the frostbite and other conditions endured during the harrowing period of time. Already distracted with the task of moving Jurassic World after being notified that an eruption of Mount Sebo may be on the horizon, Simon Masrani opts to close the Martel site entirely, deciding that his resources are too stretched across two sites. In spring of 2017, Sorkin's disillusionment with Masrani's decision boiled over into full-on rage as she met with a Jurassic World investor behind his back, Daniel Conn. Hoping to use the investors as a bargaining chip to persuade Masrani to reopen the Siberia facility, Sorkin is disappointed when Khan refuses to take any further action. Unbeknownst to Sorkin at the time, Khan was responsible for overseeing rival genetics company Manticore, and had been using his unfettered access to Isla Nublar to scavenge and steal trade secrets about dinosaurs. Now aware of the facility in Siberia, Khan dispatches a covert team to investigate what remains, and they encounter woolly mammoths, alive and breathing. The Manticorp recovery team find themselves in a deadly encounter as the deprived creatures turn on the new arrivals, seeking an opportunity to escape containment. Quickly overbearing the small reconnaissance team, the mammoths are able to break loose and run rampant on the Arctic tundra. Conscious that Russian authorities may soon catch wind of this incident, Khan pays off the local police departments and government officials, and launches a painstaking operation to capture the animals over the next two weeks. Despite their rugged and aggressive stature, eventually Manticorp agents are able to contain these animals, with the chaos and destruction left in their wake attributed to some kind of encounter with a Baba Yaga. In the summer of the same year, construction was completed on Manticorp Island. Khan, who was aware of the impending danger posed by Mount Sibo thanks to the discussions with Masrani, had opted to build a facility on an island off the coast of Costa Rica as a staging area for the company's new operations. Khan believed that the facility could be used to house and then sell assets recovered from Isla Nublar in the days after the chaotic eruption. Testing his new containment technology for the first time, Daniel Khan proceeds to organize for the woolly mammoths to be transferred to the island, making them the first specimens to make their homes on a newly constructed island. This would end up being Manticorp Island. Chaos takes hold once more in the summer of 2018, when Mount Sebo erupts on Isla Nublar. Masrani Global's volcanologists had made a devastating mistake in the readings for the dormant volcano, meaning that the park was still operational at the time of its eruption. The ensuing destruction saw much of the island destroyed, and also saw the death of Simon Masrani, Claire Deering, and much more of the upper management personnel who had made their homes resident on the island. With Masrani Global now facing a mountain of lawsuits, and with their leadership now no longer structured and plunged into disarray, Isla Nublar sat dormant, with specimens ready to be poached freely from the areas which had survived the eruption. In this world, with woolly mammoths successfully contained, and no children from Camp Cretaceous getting in the way of his plan, Daniel Conn is free to pillage what remains on Isla Nublar and Isla Sauna, setting a dangerous precedent for the emergence of Manticorp in this bold new world. With Daniel Conn's power and influence now rising, we dread to ask the question, What if? What if? What if?